beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, today's message deals with a subject that is very important for all of us. Within God's words this morning, we find a wonderful list of confessions. Confessions that we would be wise to pay attention to. Now, we've all heard the expression, confession is good for the soul. And the reality is that most of us confess to something or other many times a year. But as we study this list of revelations within our text, it's important to understand them from the perspective of the great man whom they came from, John the Baptizer. And I think we can all agree that John was certainly one who we would want to be paying attention to and be wise enough to listen to. And as we study today, one thing should become evident. And that is what a significant contribution we would make to ourselves, to our God, as well as to society if we would dare make an honest self-evaluation from time to time. You see, it takes courage to look at ourselves. It takes courage to see ourselves as we really are, not seeing who we would like to think we are, but seeing who we really are to truthfully see ourselves as others see us. What are we like? Who are we really? What do we really believe? And in what and in whom do we place our trust? As we will see in our text today, John the baptizer was put on the spot about all of this. He had to face up to a, an analysis of himself, of who he was, and present an honest self-evaluation of his own character. Jesus regarded John as a great man because of his character, and the confessions found within our text today will reveal to us John's character. And the question for us will be, how do we stack up in light of them? Today's reading, found in the book of John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 19 through verse 28, I would ask that if you are able to rise out of respect for the word. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, then why are you baptizing? If you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet, John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is the only living truth. Please be seated. It's clear that John the baptizer was put on the spot about who he was when this delegation of priests and Levites accosted him with the question, who are you? And whether he liked it or not, John had to face himself. He had to do a self-evaluation. He had to take a good look and confess who he really was. John's confession centered in true honesty. He did not try to be somebody or something that he was not. And this is something that all of us must learn. Honesty. You see, because of the sinful nature which we all possess, the constant pressure for humans is to play act. To make my life and myself artificial. To make myself and my life better than I may be. Now, of course, trying to truthfully better oneself is fine, but to see ourselves as something we are not and then trying to deceive ourselves from what we actually are, well, that's sinful. 
And when John the baptizer was asked who he was, his first confession was in the form of a denial. John 1.20 reads, He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. We don't realize the greatness of this admission until we realize the greatness of John's reputation. Scripture tells us masses, hordes of people were flocking to him from all over the land. He was a very, very popular preacher. He was very dynamic. And during this period, the world was looking for the Christ. And in their search, they came to John. And because John was a man, he certainly would have had the temptation presented to him to give in to all the praises of the people. I mean, he could have had the whole world at his feet with probably just a word. However, John did not try to be someone that he was not. He was not the Christ. And John knew that he could never save himself. You see, there's a direct correlation between saying, I am not the Christ, and saying, but I am a sinner. For without confessing one's sin, a person becomes their own Christ and their own salvation. You know, people of this world and this generation are making Christs of themselves today. Thinking they can do it all on their own. Thinking they can save themselves by themselves. But to truthfully confess Christ is always to confess my own sinfulness and my own unworthiness. Scripture tells us that Jesus called John the greatest man who ever lived. Truly I say to you, among those born of woman, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Now surely one reason that John was recognized this way by Christ was because he was honest and truthful with himself. And honestly evaluating oneself is the first qualification of a right character. But unfortunately we have all these character flaws that we all possess because of the sin that we have. And one such flaw is that every person at times is under pressure to pretend to be someone they're not. It's just like life just seems to have a way of forcing us to be superficial, to be dishonest and pretending. But this is where we can learn from John. He claimed no honors. He claimed no status. He claimed no fame, fortune, or prestige whatsoever. John only confessed to being a sinner. John claimed only the truth, his own unworthiness. But among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. There was in John the real spirit of humility because in his comments of being unworthy to untie the sandals of Jesus, he knew the Christ was coming and he knew what Christ was to do for the world. And just look at this Christ that we have. Look at what Jesus has done for us. God became man. He came down from heaven to be a servant of mankind. He took upon himself all of our sin and the full wrath of God as he died in our place. And he showed mercy and love for the world by his life of healing and his compassion for all people. And he cared for the people through his miracles, his power, his wisdom, his lasting principles and teachings. And after his torturous, humiliating and painful death upon the cross, he demonstrated his omnipotence through his resurrection and his ascension and soon his second coming. But now take a look at us. See how we are and what we do. My friends, we are all guilty of sin. 
We are all guilty of greed. We are all guilty of hatred and prejudice. And our homes and our lives suffer from too much ego and too much pride. And left alone to our own sinful selves, we have nothing to offer this world but ruin. So we must take a good look and reveal the spirit of humility clearly demonstrated by John. We must take a good look at the complete humility of the cross of Jesus and the personhood of Christ. For it is only this Christ-like quality that makes life rich and beautiful. And it was only complete humility that brought Jesus Christ to the manger in Bethlehem. Philippians 2.7 But emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And friends, it is this humility that is the crying need of an overinflated humanity. Today's world lives by the principle, I am better than you. But we need to change that. We need to say, you are as good as I. Conceit and pride are the diseases of this world. And they must be replaced by humility. They must be replaced by love and kindness for those around us. We need to look at the cross of Jesus and confess to our condition. What we need today is truthful recognition of ourselves. Truthful recognition of our real condition. To recognize the Bible's truth that we are all sinners. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So let's take a good look and rid ourselves of the disguise. Let's take a good look, be truthful and admit to what we are. Unworthy to untie Christ's shoes. John confessed to the greatness of Jesus. He acknowledged that he was nothing and Christ was everything. And our lives, yours and mine, should own up to this same thing. Not me, not myself, but Christ. This must be the Christian's only confession. Not my own goodness, but the goodness found only in Jesus. This is our task. Our mission is not to elevate ourselves in the eyes of the world, but rather to direct lost souls to Jesus Christ. Because you and I, my friends, are nothing without the Master. And the Apostle Paul reaffirms this fact and tells us to turn away from ourselves to the living God. Acts 14, 15 reads, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn away from these vain things to a living God. Loved ones, we are to turn away from ourselves. That's what he's telling us. We are to turn to Christ. We are to view all of life as the reoccurring bending of one's knees to Jesus. Let's not try to be our own savior. Let's stop doing that. Let's not try to find joy in our own goodness. But rather let us acknowledge the saviorhood found only in Jesus Christ. And then let us appreciate how truly refreshing it is to admit to his lordship and my sinfulness and to see how wonderful it is to worship the Christ as a sinner who really needs him. You know, John knew who he was and that he was only an instrument of Jesus. John only regarded himself as a voice. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. 
This statement from John is so very important for us to understand. John was agonizing for souls to repent. He was begging for people to get ready for Jesus. John was declaring to Christians to take a good look and see what we ought to be. Voices for God. And loved ones, we desperately need voices today. We urgently need bold Christian voices and unwavering conditions. We cannot let the world go into Christless graves while we remain silent. We only have this one life to live and do the will of our Savior. I mean, Christians, why are the Christians so lax about talking to others about Jesus? Why? We have voices. Let's use them for Christ. I mean, if Christians won't speak up and share the good news of salvation and eternal life, who will? And here's what we need to understand. This is important because in spite of our unworthiness and sinfulness, Christians are God's chosen. We are to be His voice to the lost world. That is why we are here. But it just seems that we are moving away from this vital emphasis in our world. The church today only talks about and is becoming a voice for social or political or economic propaganda. And that won't save you. Only God's word will save you. Speaking in political and economic things, the social gospel, that is not the church's function. Our purpose is to be a voice. You are the church. I am the church. We are to be a voice to call the world to repentance. We must say to the world, as described in John 1.26, but among you stands one you do not know. You see, we are to evangelize the world to the one it does not yet know. Jesus Christ. My role as a pastor is to truthfully preach and teach the gospel, no matter how uncomfortable the topic may be. Our purpose and mission as a church is to share this same gospel message of personal repentance. We have only this one short life to make a difference for the lost family we all have lost family members. Our lost friends. How many of you have friends who are lost? We only have this one short life to witness to our family and our friends and our coworkers and our neighbors, all those around us. And our message must be the same as John's. I mean, think about this. John lived in a world, the Roman Empire, doesn't get much worse than that. He lived in a world full of injustice, full of greed and hate. Yet his message was not one of social or political issues. His message was of personal repentance and full, truthful commitment to Jesus Christ. And that, my friends, is the only message that can lead a lost soul to eternal life with God in heaven. As a voice for Christ, we can learn from John. Because John directed those who came looking to him away from himself. He directed them away to the only one that mattered, Jesus. And John's message was a simple one. John 1.23 reads, Make straight the way of the Lord. You see, John was in effect saying, Don't look at me. 
Get your eyes off of me. I am nothing but a worthless sinner. Look to Jesus Christ, the one who came born in a manger. The one who came to die to set you free. Jesus is the only one who saves. And this is the message that is so appropriate these days before Christmas. This is the message we need to hear. What's all important is to make ready to receive Christ Jesus. You know, this is such a wonderful time of year. It's a beautiful time. All the, the lights, the manger scene. It's such a wonderful time of year. But the reason for these Advent Sundays is to take a good look at ourselves. To take a good look and prepare our hearts to receive the Christ child as our Lord and Savior. It's a time to take a good look at ourselves and ready our hearts for special spiritual preparation. But the world in which we live is ready for what? Christmas? Hardly. Preparations for Christmas are not physical. They're spiritual. And it is our privilege as Christians now more than ever to declare the greatness of Jesus Christ by the power of God's word to the world. But emulating the exceptional character of John the baptizer means we too must declare our humility. He must increase, but I must decrease. Loved ones, it is time for all Christians to admit I am nothing. He is everything. Our entire lives should be spent joyfully proclaiming to the lost soul the preeminence of God's Son. You know, this is a very particularly unique time in which we live. One that desperately needs this biblical view and confession. Because in our world today, people inflate and elevate themselves more than ever. We post exaggerated depictions on Facebook. We take selfies to show the world how great we are, and we put pictures online and social media to brag about all the things we possess. Today, self is on the throne. And all of society are making paths straight for themselves. Humanism is very much upon us. The position of most people is that they can take care of themselves, thank you. But loved ones, we need a return to the Lordship of Jesus. We need a return to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in order to stop the current path of this chaotic world in which we live. So I plead with you, never think of Christmas without Christ. And never think of life apart from His Lordship. We will soon be closing the door on another Advent season and opening the door to yet another Christmas. And our lives are rapidly passing by. The most important thing we must do is to take a good look at ourselves and take a long gazing look upon the cross of Jesus Christ. Are you prepared to receive Jesus? Are you preparing yourself to kneel beside the stable at his manger bed? Or are you just too busy with yourself and the things of this world? Today God's word has shown us the ideal example of a great man. One whom Jesus called greater than all. John has set the example for us to follow. And it's a simple one. He took the spotlight from himself 
and focused it upon Christ. And loved ones, living for Jesus will always be the road to true happiness and peace of mind. So this Advent season, take a good look. Take a good look at the Christ child laying in the manger and uphold this Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. Glorious Father, thank you for loving us like you do, Father. You've shown us so much love by sending your own Son to die for us so that we could have eternal life with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.